Welcome to the Canadian Immigration Institute. In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about the provincial nominee programs. With all of the choices that you have, how are you going to figure out where to go? Well, in this video, we're going to show you all about the BCPNP. Fortunately, I don't have to explain all of this on my own. I've brought my guest, Chanel Rosenbaum, one of the lawyers at Holthy Immigration Law, to join me. Uh, Chanel has drafted an awesome little uh, blog post on our website. And if you slide over to our website, you'll be able to find it entitled Provincial Nominations. And this is a part of the series that we have. This one is Immigrating to BC, an overview of the BC PNP. So definitely check that out. There'll be a link in the description of the video. But Chanel... What do you think about this BCPNP program? It's an excellent option for someone looking to move to BC who has a job offer, usually, um, and doesn't quite have enough points to get through in express entry. Um, so it's definitely an option to consider. Um, it can be a little more challenging than some of the other PMP programs, but it's always worth considering your options. Um, and we've provided a lot of information in the blog post so you can really assess what you're eligible for and whether this is suitable for you. You know, and it's interesting, Chanel, because what are the destinations people usually go to? They go to BC, they go to Ontario, they go to Quebec. Well, that's all fine and dandy and getting a study permit to go study in those locations. But with these BC, with the BCPNP and all of the provincial nominee programs, they have a limited quota. And so if you have, you know, 50% of the total international students living in Ontario or 30% in BC, whatever it is, and they're all competing per, for a few spots, I think that's one of the challenges that people have. So why don't we start off here? We'll slide right over to our little presentation window. And um, let's talk about the first thing, which basically is for those who have never, you know, paid any attention to this, this is all new to them. What is the BCPNP? So Canada has the provincial nominee program where the different provinces nominate candidates um, basically to move to their province. So they nominate them for permanent residency, um, which is either done directly or through the express entry program. Um, so the BC PMP is British Columbia's uh, version of the, the provincial nominee program. Um, so the opportunity for BC to nominate candidates that they feel will contribute economically to the province. And that's one of the key things, too, because the goal, at least for the provinces, is to get people to want to stay. And the, it all initiated with the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. And, you know, people just it wasn't it wasn't the, the primary destination for many immigrants to Canada. And so with the uh, with the inception of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, they built in these these agreements with the province to let them select a certain number of candidates who they think will actually go there and live. And so, uh, like we talked about before, BC and Ontario don't typically have a lot of trouble getting people to come, but there's still very, very good opportunities for the provinces to pick strategically the people they want to immigrate. Yeah, they want certain people who bring a certain set of skills, which the province has high demand for and they know will contribute. Um, so... This is their opportunity to handpick some candidates. Indeed. All right, let's cover a little bit of an overview of the different pathways. And obviously in this video, we don't want it to be three hours long and we could probably do a whole seminar on all the various programs. So why don't we just touch on a few of the main ones that people are looking at? So the main pathways, they fall under skills immigration. And this is an opportunity for different professionals um, effectively to, to come to, to BC. Um, it actually touches on a number of different um, pathways for different professionals at different points in their career. Um, so you've got the skilled worker, which is for certain professionals who already have experience. Um, you've got the health authority, which is in particular for healthcare professionals entry level and semi-skilled workers that provides an opportunity for someone who's new in their career 
Um, and then you've got the international graduates and international postgraduate categories. Um, so they are specifically for candidates who have studied in BC um, or in Canada. And in particular, um, the international postgraduate um, pathway is the only one for which you don't actually require a job offer. Um, so it's important to note that for all of these other pathways, you actually do require a valid job offer in BC. Um, and then finally, we've got the BCPMP Tech Pathway, which is obviously for tech professionals. And I'll just highlight to everyone once again that this blog post that Chanel has written has a lot more detail than we're going to be covering here in this short little video. What we're trying to do is address the very, very high points of the BCPNP, but dive into this article. There's links, there's more, like there's a lot more further explanations as to the requirements. And as we go through and kind of uh, cover a few more topics here within our, um, our little video here today, we will definitely direct you back to that blog post where you can get a lot more detail. All right. Let's talk a little bit, Chanel, about how to apply. So is this, uh, is this paper-based? Is it online? Is it, you know, portals? And oh my goodness, if we've been filing applications through the immigration portals, it's been uh, quite a headache. But what, what's the process for people looking to apply? It's online. It's another portal which anyone who has either, either applied for a visa or immigrated to Canada before is usually familiar with. Um, but this is a BC portal. It's not one of the standard IRCC portals. So we hope that it, it works a little more effectively um, than often the IRCC one can. Um, so here we've got the login page up on the screen. Um, we don't have logins to access this at the moment because we're not BC PMP applicants. But if you are interested in pursuing um, an application through the BC PMP, you should access this page. The link is on the blog post. Um, you can sign up. First step is to actually register. Um, once you've submitted a registration, you will get a score based on the, the different factors um, that your application has, and that registration stays valid for 12 months. During that time, BC can assess whether you're a suitable candidate based on those different factors, and if they do deem you to be suitable, they will issue you with an invitation to apply. Um, so once you receive an invitation, you actually have to apply within 30 days, um, and then you submit your application. This is all done through that portal. Excellent. All right. Let's talk about the uh, intersection between the, the various BCPNP programs and the express entry process. Yes, so there's the alternate option to apply is actually through your express entry profile if you are trying to pursue uh, permanent residency that way. Um, so if you meet one of the criteria for um, one of the express entry programs and you have a valid um, express entry profile, you get a job seeker validation code and you indicate in your profile that you are interested in immigrating to BC, um, then you also open yourself up potentially for an expression of interest or an invitation to apply, um, meaning that uh, they could tap you on the shoulder and, and tell you that they are interested. If you accept their nomination, you actually end up with 600 extra points added to your, added to your express entry profile, meaning that it almost guarantees that you will be drawn in the next draw. Yeah. And the draws, even though they've been super high, um, and we've now shifted back as of September the 9th to no program specified draws, they've all been in the 500s. So like you said, Chanel, with 600, that's pretty much guaranteed. And, and that's really why they created it that way. The province has said, fine, we'll do the vetting. We will isolate the candidates that we want, that we'll, we feel will have the best chances of economically establishing in our province. Then you federal government, you IRCC folks, you guys do the background and security screening. So um, we want, and they each negotiated. They, in the beginning, not every province had uh, express entry streams, but over time they've all, I think pretty much most of the provinces now have some form of express entry stream. And why is it advantageous? Because theoretically, at least pre-pandemic, the PR applications after nomination were taking less than six months. Now we know they're not quite there. It's definitely taking longer, but uh, the express entry has become quite a popular route for many people applying through the provinces. Not only do they get that nomination, but it's pretty much a slam dunk that they're going to get that invitation to apply. 
All right. Um, let's hit on the very, very last one, Chanel, which is the entrepreneur immigration pathway. So this, this is the final pathway, which is designed for entrepreneurs, but it's a little more challenging than the other pathways because you do have to come in with a certain net worth. Um, so money basically to invest in your business here in Canada. Um, we have outlined the details of this in the blog post. There are a couple of different categories. You've got the base category here, and um, there's also a regional pilot program at the moment, which is similar to the base category with some, just a few key differences. Um, I would encourage you to come over to the website, have a look at the blog post for more information. And there are some links there that can link you to um, the, the guides, the overview of these programs. Um, if that is something that is of interest and if you meet these, uh, these requirements, including the net worth requirement. That, excellent. And the easiest way to connect Chanel with you, right here, speak to a lawyer, you bet. And you can scroll down here and you can see Chanel right here. And it's pretty easy. Click on the link and she can help you to navigate your way through the BCPNP. All right, Chanel. So any last minute tips or takeaways from the BCPNP that you just feel people need to know and understand? With all of the PMPs, it's really important that you choose a province you genuinely do want to live and work in um, and that you have ties to. BC in particular, similar to Ontario, is a little more challenging because as Mark has flagged up earlier, um, there's just such a high number of applicants. So there's a lot of competition for these spots. Therefore, really to strengthen your application, you should show as many ties as you can to the province so that they, they choose you confidently knowing that you will actually live there once you get your permanent residence and you will contribute. Um, so that's really the key, I think, you should assess your options, but consider where you genuinely want to be based um, and where your skills will be most valuable. You bet. And a simple little consult well in advance, even in advance of choosing where you might want to go to school or accepting job officers, uh, offers to Canada if you're not already in Canada. Um, a consult can help you to navigate through the different options and develop a long-term plan, not just one that's going to get you an initial visa, but that's going to actually help you to transition all the way through to permanent residence and being the next immigrant to the wonderful country of Canada. All right. Thanks, Chanel. And thanks, everybody. Thanks. And stay tuned for more videos on the various PNPs across Canada as Chanel brings uh, to the table a whole bunch of helpful information. Take care. Thanks.